Hi folks, it's Bob from Mountain Crest Farm. No, I'm not outside with a cup of coffee. Number one, it's about 6.30 in the evening. I have moved my coffee chats indoor for the duration, I think. I might do one or two more outside, but y'all have seen me in here lately. It's a little bit too chilly out there. It's, uh, I don't know, about 35, 38 degrees. Let's get down to about 30. 30-31 tonight. Oh, and that means it's going to be about 30 or 31 in the morning. So, I won't be doing a coffee chat in the morning. I guess I'll just do them in the evening. Hey, that way I can get it done all at one time. Do it, edit it, upload it, schedule it, be done. Oh, me. By the way, in case I forget at the end of this video, Merry Christmas. If some of y'all don't see another video between, of mine between now and Christmas, Merry Christmas. Now, with having that said, Merry Christmas, I'm going to go off on a rant. Oh, me. It's a rant about some, not all, but some homesteading. I know coffee chats are usually not about homesteading. And this isn't really about homesteading. This is really about running your mouth when you don't know what the hell you're talking about. But what's setting me off is a video I saw from a homesteading channel. And I think I mentioned a couple months ago a video that was done and gave some bad information. And it was just mentioned in passing. And I thought that video was going to be the last I saw of it, but it popped back up again. Not that video. The channel, and I'm not going to name the channel. It's somebody from up there around your neck of the woods, Mary Grace. I believe he's from up in New York, a little bit east of you, a lot east of you. I think, I think he's over there somewhere around Albany. I don't know, and I'm not going to name the channel. Some of y'all may, may know the channel that I'm talking about when I describe what the video said, maybe you do, maybe you don't, I don't know. Doesn't really matter, doesn't matter what channel, because this is, he's not the only channel that's done this, he's just the only channel that has done, done it in this way, that's gotten under my skin like this has. Like the title says, if you don't know it, don't say it. A um, little backstory on it. A couple months ago, this fellow had a pig that ripped his leg open uh, as a boar with his tusks and tore his leg open pretty bad. Uh, it was a bad wound. It would have scared me. Scared him. Would have scared me. He put it off on pigs last time. Uh, after telling what had happened, they were going to get rid of pigs, weren't going to raise pigs anymore because pigs were dangerous. I mentioned it on here that no pigs aren't dangerous. Y'all know how I feel about raising pigs. I'm a pig farmer, for God's sake. And my boar, my 900-pound <clears throat> large black hog boar, who is a good buddy of mine, he wouldn't hurt a flea. Um, so you know how I feel about pigs. You know how I feel about boars, especially mine. You know how I feel about the breed I raise. This guy doesn't raise my breed. He doesn't, there's a lot of things he doesn't do. For one thing, he doesn't have much experience doing it. But anyway, I thought that was going to be the last of it, that video a couple months ago. Up popped another one today. They're still staying in pigs, but they're changing the way they do things. He's double fencing around them all. Waste of money, waste of good fencing. Uh... He's making some changes. Some of them, he's making the right changes for the wrong reasons. Some of it's just stupid waste. Um, he's not stupid. He seems like a pretty smart guy. Seems like a nice guy. I'd probably like him if I met him face to face. I don't like him because, I don't like the way he does his videos about pigs, though. He shoots off his mouth when he doesn't know what he's talking about. And he and I had a little back and forth in the comments, and he said he was just, telling their experience. Well, no. His experience is that he got his leg ripped open by a boar. That's his experience. 
that he can speak to. Um, one of the things he said in the video that I saw today, though, was that, specifically, boars are vicious animals. That's not his experience. That's his opinion. And that's an opinion that's, frankly, to be blunt, full of crap. Um, let me tell you what happened real briefly, and then tell you why that's wrong, and what it is about the video that just irritates the heck out of me. He had three boar piglets. Uh, they were bigger than piglets. But he had three uncastrated male pigs that were the sons of this boar that hurt him. And he had them in a barn. That's what he said in his first video. He had them kept up in a barn. And he had his main boar, George, was out in his pen. And he let the three small boars out of the barn. And they ran over to the edge of their area, which was divided from the main boar, George, by nothing but a fence. Uh, looks like a field fence with a wire down low and a wire up high. Electric wire down low and electric wire up high. And the boar, the king of the hill boar, George, and the little boars, who I'm going to make an assumption here, and we all know about assumptions, they were not piglets. They, Like I said, they were a little bit bigger than piglets. They were old enough. They were starting to smell like boars. Uh, they were producing testosterone and smelling right and all that sort of thing. What happens when two boars get together? Now, if those boars had been raised in the pen with George, there probably wouldn't have been a problem. But at this point, they've been raised separately from George. As far as George is concerned, those aren't his sons. Those aren't cute little piglets that he sired. Those are other boars. Those are competition. Boars do not like competition. So, all that's separating them is a fence. And George, in the words of the fellow that did this video that has this channel, said that, George was attacking the fence, and the boar, little boarlets were attacking the fence, and they were trying to get to each other, running up down the fence line, and just raising all kind of ruckus, and knocked the bottom wire loose, which grounded it out, which means there wasn't any electricity there. And if there isn't any electricity there, then they could get to each other. So he put some feet out a little ways away. In his first video, he said he did it over on the other side of the pasture. And in this video today, he indicated where he put it. It's about 20 feet away. And um, put some feed out to distract George. And he said it did. George went over to the feed. And he went in where, into George's pen to fix the fence. And next thing he knew, George had attacked him. And ripped his leg open. Um, I wasn't there. I can't state this as a fact, but based on several years experience raising pigs, based on several years experience with a boar, a big boar with some tusks that are that long and razor sharp, let me tell you what I think happened. I think that food distracted George for about a half a second. Now, there isn't much that'll get, that'll distract a pig from food, but a boar will distract another boar. And I think George went over that food just long enough to sniff it, check it out, and say, hey, that's food, but there's boars over there by the fence. And I think George went after those little boars again. What was between George and those boars besides a fence? The fellow that did this video, the fellow that has that other channel. He was there trying to fix the fence, and he was between George and those other smaller boars. Let me tell you something about a pig. If a pig is at point A, and 
something he wants. I don't care if it's food. I don't care if it's a sow that's smelling right, that is in season and ready to breed. I don't care if it's other boars. If they're at point B, and you happen to be standing somewhere along that line between the boar, the main boar, at point A, and whatever he wants at point B, then Archimedes' theorem comes into effect. And Archimedes' theorem says that the shortest distance between point A, between two points, is a straight line. If you're standing in that straight line, that boar is going to knock you out of the way. He's not trying to hurt you. He's not attacking you. He's not being a vicious animal like this video says. He is going to point B, what he wants. In this case, those three other boars. George wanted to fight. And the guy with doing the video got in the way. Now, if all he did was run over there, he would have just run the guy over. Well, he got him with a tusk. I don't, he wasn't attacking him, in my opinion. He wasn't attacking him. When he got to him, he went to get him out of the way. Shoved him out of the way with his nose, which happens to be right about where his tusks are. And ripped the guy's leg open. The guy contends that George continued to attack him. I don't think so. The guy was laying on the ground. He was still between George and the fence, which means he was still between George and those other piglets. And when the George tried to get to the fence, he was kicking him back with, his, with a leg that wasn't hurt. He says he was a, George was still attacking him, that he was trying to fend him off with his leg. No, George wasn't attacking him. George was trying to get to those piglets. If he had spent the energy that he was expending trying to push George away, if he had spent that energy trying to get the hell from between George and those other boars, the boar would have never touched him. The boar wanted the piglets. Period. Now, why is that important enough for me to do a video? Well, because a lot of my videos encourage people to raise pigs. I think the pig is the perfect homestead livestock after chickens. When you're homesteading, when you got a small farm, first thing you got to do is get chickens. That's just the way it is. I think it's a law somewhere that first you get chickens. Second, I think pigs are perfect. Now, a lot of people go with goats as their second livestock. Okay. I don't agree, but that's okay. I've had goats and I've had pigs, and I think pigs are better as the first livestock for a homesteader. And when you pick the right breed... You're producing good meat. I know, yes, this is a commercial for large black pigs. When you pick the right breed, the right breed being large black hogs, you've got a pig that is great for a beginner because it is a docile pig. You've got a pig that produces fantastic meat. You've got a pig that is critically endangered. You're helping the breed survive. And I'll touch on how does... Raising and killing and eating a pig help it survive. I'll touch on that in just a minute. But when you've got the right breed, when you understand something about pig behavior, you're not going to get hurt. There are breeds out there that are very aggressive. His isn't. The breed he's got is not aggressive. It's not as docile as a large black. But he doesn't have an aggressive breed. But there are some breeds out there that are aggressive. But what irritates me about that video is people that people come to YouTube to learn things. I came to YouTube before I ever had a pig, trying to figure out, do I want to raise pigs? What kind of pigs do I want to raise? And when they come to YouTube and they watch his videos, because if you do a search for pigs and are they dangerous and all that sort of thing, his videos are going to pop up. And they're going to see that this pig that's supposed to be a docile breed ripped his leg open because it's a vicious animal. That's what they'll learn from his videos, and that pisses me off. And like the title of this video says, if you don't know what you're talking about, don't open your mouth. Because he doesn't know what he's talking about. He knows of a bad experience that he had. You know, 
this is going to sound weird, but his videos are kind of like racism. He had a bad experience with one pig. I've had a bad experience with a black person. I've had a black person try to kill me. It was years ago, and he came close to succeeding. Should I say that black people are vicious human beings? Like he says, boars are vicious animals because of one incident? No. That would show me to be pretty much an ignorant bigot. Well, he's a bigot about pigs. They are not vicious animals. He made mistakes. He can learn from those mistakes. But he doesn't need to be running down something that is, can be an important part of, of a homestead's infrastructure out of ignorance. If you don't know what you're talking about, don't talk. Stop and think about it. When you're talking, you're not learning. When you're not talking, you're listening. And when you're listening, that's when you're learning. And you need to learn before you talk. Now, let me touch on that other thing, and then we're going to be done. This is about 16, seconds, 16 minutes long already. It needs to, be, needs to shorten it up. <clears throat> How does raising a pig so that you can kill it and eat it help the breed? Because remember, I push large black pigs. They're critically endangered. How, if you raise large black pigs and kill them and eat them, how does that help the breed? Well, when people raise any livestock, any endangered breed of livestock that has a use besides as a pet, if all I have raised was one pig a year, if my boar and my sow produced one litter of 12 pigs and I killed off 11 of them and raised one pig, for me to kill and put in the freezer so that I can do the same thing the next year I have not helped the breed at all. But when I raise large black pigs and that one boar and that one sow will produce 25 to 30 piglets a year and I'm only putting one in my freezer, that means 24 to 29 are going somewhere else. Some of those people will raise them to kill and put in their freezer. But some of them will raise them, will buy one as, as um, breeding stock. And then they'll be producing 20 or 30 a year, even if they only have one sow. And the same thing gets perpetuated and perpetuated. And that way, because it is a fantastic animal for food, the fact that it's a good animal for food makes other people want them and more people raise them, and it helps perpetuate the breed. That's how raising something to kill it for food can help the breed. Well, I guess that's enough of that rant. Folks, I don't care what you're... I don't care what you're going to talk about. Know what you're talking about before you start talking, because if you don't, you don't know what kind of effect it can have. His videos can have the effect of stopping people from doing something that can be a very important part of homesteading. You want to tell your experience? I had a pig. It hurt me. Fine. Try to figure out why it hurts you instead of just spouting off ignorant garbage like boars are vicious animals. They're not. There are a couple of breeds that you couldn't get me to raise because they are aggressive toward people. But his breed wasn't. My breed's not. Most breeds aren't. And even within the breed, individuals have personalities. I've got a sow out there. She wouldn't hurt me for nothing. Unless she has babies. When she has babies, and those babies are less than two weeks old, when they're the right age that I'm out there notching their ears and castrating the males... That's a real fun circus type day you putting on a show because she'll hurt you if you mess with her piglets. I know that. She's not a vicious breed. She's not a vicious pig. She's a very protective mother. I like that. But especially when you're putting something out for the whole world to see, be careful what you say. Make sure you're putting out good information. 
so you don't lead somebody down the path the wrong way. I tell people, no matter what I say, check it out. I say that large black pigs are fantastic pigs to raise. Don't take my word for it. Check it out. Find out if I know what I'm talking about before you get yourself into something that really wasn't right. But just don't be putting stuff on the internet that, uh, on YouTube, on the internet. Did y'all know that YouTube is the second largest search engine in, on the internet? Google's obviously the first. And the second place people go is to YouTube to search for something. So don't be putting stuff on YouTube that's inaccurate. Find out what you're talking about first. I try to. I try to not put stuff out here that's just inaccurate stuff. When I tell you something, even if it's wrong, you can bet it's accidentally wrong because I did a lot of research to find out what the truth before I put it out there. So y'all have a fantastic day, as usual. That thing, I'm not going to forget it at the end like I thought it was. You know, back there at the very first, I told y'all Merry Christmas in case I forgot to at the end. Well, we're at the end and I'm not going to forget to. Y'all have a fantastic Christmas season. Not a holiday season, a Christmas season. And uh, remember, those fantastic days are easy to, simple to come by. They're not easy, but they're simple to come by. Just always remember those two things that I always tell you. Before I tell you them again, though, hit that little thumbs up down there if you like the video. If you're not a subscriber, hit that subscribe button. And when you hit the subscribe button, that little bell appears. And I don't have my bell or I'd ring it right now. But hit that little bell so you get notifications that, uh, that <clears throat> when I've done another video. Or when my live stream. Don't forget about my live stream. Sundays at 6 o'clock Eastern. Every Sunday. Now I need to remind y'all. No, I don't need to remind most of you. But some of you are new. So I'll remind you that if you want to have fantastic days and fantastic years, it's real simple. Just remember... The tomb was empty, and he is alive. I'll see y'all next time. Have a great one.